so now we will exclusively discuss about the minerals or mineral resources first we will understand the spatial distribution of major minerals in india so if you face the briefly india map right so now we will understand the spatial distribution i mean in which particular belts the minerals are located good morning students welcome back to pluto says right today is our 43rd day and today we will study about the mineral and the energy resources in india right so the mineral uh, and energy resources especially this part the energy resources part it is a uh, very important uh, important not only for the prelims but also for the point of view of mains examination right so uh, from both mains and prelims perspective this topic is important right so if you see the brief introduction to first i will discuss entirely about the mineral resources next i will discuss about the uh, energy resources so in energy resources we, uh, we cover both conventional conventional and non conventional energy resources conventional so uh, minerals so broadly uh, minerals we can classify as metallic minerals and uh, non metallic minerals non metallic minerals so uh, you might be knowing the properties there are some technical aspects so you will study uh, especially in the subject of chemistry the difference or we can say special characteristics of metals and how they differ from the non metals right so we will also see this classification and also we will see some major minerals that are important in india right so india possesses a rich diversity of minerals as you all know around 30 minerals uh, they are holding uh, 30 major minerals are there so they are holding significant economic importance to the country so some of the major minerals are iron ore so this is we can say basic and very important mineral it is the basics for uh, basic for any industry next one is coal so now it is the still major source when it comes to electricity in the country so majority of the share still coming from uh, thermal energy only right manganese bauxite and mica so these are the <coughs> major minerals some other minerals are also there like feldspar fluorides limestone dolomite etc so all these play, play vital roles in when we come to different types of industries that are there in india so as you all know some of the minerals the, that are not available in india so we are depending on imports we are dependent on uh, imports for main some other major minerals right some minerals like we can say iron ore and bauxite iron ore so uh, so from this iron will be uh, iron and steel will be produced and bauxite so from here this is the raw material for aluminum so these minerals are somewhat abundant in india so we are uh, exporting them we are exporting the raw material however here also work has to be done instead of exporting them and importing the we can say finished uh, uh, goods like uh, finished aluminum and uh, uh, finished iron and steel industries have to be further established in india so that we utilize the entire raw material and produce the iron and steel and also aluminum right so when we come to uh, non metallic uh, minerals or it can be considered as an energy resource also crude oil so on crude oil also we are heavily dependent on the imports especially from the you can say western asia west asia 
so this issue has also has to be addressed because it is leading to lot of uh, financial problems also we are spending lot of our uh, foreign exchange uh, for importing crude oil so these things are there when we discuss the main topics we will go in detail into these aspects right so the, this is about mineral resources when we see the energy resources energy resources they are also vital for country's development we can say the energy is the backbone of the economy because for everything you need energy to run the uh, industries to run the vehicles for everything you need energy so they all they also play an important role all right so if we see some facts about the energy resources so india has the total installed power generation capacity in 2022 it was 4 uh, 4 lakh 10000 uh, uh 4 lakh 10339 megawatt or we can simply call it as 41 uh, 410 gigawatt so this is the installed capacity of power generation of india so this is we can say installed capacity is a different from the generated or actual we can say actual production actual production so um, in many cases the power plants whatever power plants there uh, there what type of uh, power plant it can, it can be or it might be so generally or normally they could uh, they cannot run up to their uh, full capacity so because of many problems like operational issues or shortage of we can say uh, coal etc raw material whatever that is used in the particular power plants so uh, due to all these issues the actual generating power will be comparatively less uh, when we compare it to the actual capacity so this is the i mean the actual capacity of the we can say the prescribed capacity of uh, power plants uh, that is 410 gigawatts in india all right so in this 57.5% it is still coming from the fossil fuels fossil fuels means you might be knowing especially fossil fuels coal we are using coal for uh, generating power in the thermal power plants so some of uh, uh, po- some power plants uh, also run on natural ga- natural gas etc so whereas 42.5% this is coming from the non fossil fuels so non fossil fuels are like generating through solar power generating through wind uh, wind power and also generating through uh, water that is hydroelectric power power so you should be thorough with the facts and also the composition of the energy mixture also you should be aware right so this is a brief introduction about the thermals uh, sorry uh, mineral resources and also the energy resources right so now we will exclusively discuss about the minerals or mineral resources first we will understand the spatial distribution of major minerals in india so if it is the briefly india map right so now we will understand the spatial distribution i mean in which particular belts the minerals are located so they are not evenly distributed globally and also within india also they are not distributed evenly so they are confined to some major belts uh, this distribution is influenced by geological formations this thing you know so distribution of minerals is influenced by for that matter the energy resources also it is dependent on some geological formations india's mineral distribution is concentrated in certain regions these main belts of mineral distribution exist in the peninsular plateau region so in the previous classes we have studied that this peninsular part is the older part and whatever the northern we can say gangetic plains including himalayas are there those are newly formed so they are divided of mineral resources even if they are exist they are very minor we can say they are uh, existing in a minor quantity so majority of the mineral belts and the major minerals they are located in the peninsular india because of the all the geological uh, geological aspect that have taken place there uh, similarly 
the peninsular plateau part is also we can say older many uh, much much older than the we can say northern part of india all right so first belt is the north eastern plateaus so north eastern plateaus let's see what uh, is comprising in north eastern plateau so it includes chota nagpur plateau so chota nagpur plateau very very important basically it is comprising the regions of chatisgarh jharkhand and some parts of odisha and west bengal also so this is like it's one of the important areas of uh, mineral resources right chota nagpur plateau odisha plateau and eastern andhra plateau so this region is comprising like this right so this belt it is the one of the major mineral belts in india so this is the first belt this is the first belt all right so it is rich in a variety of minerals as you all know iron ore many types of iron ore iron ore bauxite many other minerals are available from there right especially those used in metallurgical industries metallurgical industries means production of iron and steel production of aluminum etc right so prominent minerals are iron ore manganese mica bauxite limestone etc limestone dolomite etc these are these are the some of the important minerals which are available there right abundant coal deposits are along with the river valleys like damodar mahanadi etc so mahanadi you know damodar also you know so the in these river valleys abundant coal reserves are also present sir so, apart from that substantial deposits of copper uranium thorium and phosphate are there so uranium and thorium uh, you, you very well know these are atomic minerals we use them in the our uh, three stage nuclear power production we have already studied this so apart from those two minerals copper and phosphate are also present in this region right this is about the chota nagpur plateau odisha plateau and eastern andhra pradesh plateau so basically this is the belt we can say this belt is comprising these particular minerals next next one is southwestern southwestern plateaus this is another belt so it encompasses karnataka plateau adjoining tamil nadu plateau so basically this region this region we can say it is the second region southwestern plateau rich metallic metallic minerals such as iron ore manganese and bauxite are present uh, here all right home to all the three gold mines in india so this region comprises uh, comprises the kolar mines you very well know and also uh, in the madhya pradesh panna region also there are some uh, we can say a gold mine so this region or this plateau or this belt is home to all the three gold mines in india including the panna and kolar gold mines right one notable aspect here is the absence of coal deposits here so basically iron ore is more predominantly you know uh, in uh, karnataka region especially babu budangiri hills iron ore is very much uh, prevalent there so one specific feature is the coal absence of coal deposits in the region right this is about the second region right third one is northwestern region right so about this region northwestern region <coughs> it extends from gulf of kambar in gujarat to aravalli range in rajasthan right so we can say basically this part so gulf of kambar is here so it extends like this so it extends from gulf of kambar to the aravalli ranges in rajasthan so the major we can say uh, mineral that is available here is the crude oil right petroleum and natural gas so these these are the major minerals available there so we we can also say the crude oil oil or petroleum and natural gas natural gas so you can say this is the predominant mineral or resource that is available in this region right other minerals such as uh, i mean 
other minerals also present but they are small and scarce right so this region is known for reserves and the production of non ferrous minerals like copper silver lead zinc etc so it, this region is known for non ferrous uh, or uh, non ferrous metals like these copper silver lead zinc etc right so this is all about the uh, information about the three major mineral belts that are located in india right now we will see about the individual minerals according to their classification so broadly minerals can be classified into metallic and non metallic minerals so the difference between the metals and the non metals uh, you will basically study in the chemistry the, these are I mean the metals have some specific features that are differentiating them from the other we can say minerals right further these metallic uh, metallic minerals can be divided into ferrous minerals and the non ferrous minerals right non ferrous minerals right so <coughs> metallic minerals they are divided into ferrous and non ferrous minerals so ferrous metallic uh, minerals we see iron manganese chromite pyrite etc so they all fall under this category ferrous minerals right they are cr crucial for the development of metallurgical industries particularly iron and steel and their alloys so this is about ferrous metallic minerals major mineral in that category is the iron ore right so this is the ba base uh, basis for iron and steel production right so when we see the iron ore india has reserves of india has the high reserves of high quality iron ore positioning itself among the top countries globally in terms of iron ore resources so india is one of the major countries that have good quality of iron resources so it is one estimation says this india has at least 20% of the global iron ore reserves uh, in our country so this is one estimate right the quality of iron ore found in india is exceptionally high with iron content exceeding 60% so when iron uh, iron content uh, in iron ore exceeding 60% it is considered as very good quality of uh, we can say mineral or ore so further iron ore can be divided into three categories uh so those category uh, those categories uh, those categories are we can say first one is hematite so it is also referred to as red ore due to its red color so it is we can say superior quality of iron ore superior quality of iron ore hematite so it contains up to 68% of iron content making it one of the highest graded iron ores next category uh, next category is magnetite so it is dark brown to blackish in color often termed as black ore right so because of its color so it contains up to 60% of the iron content so this quality is also not at all bad this is also a good quality of iron ore next one is lime limonite so it is yellow in color iron content ranges from 35 to 50% so this is the major i mean we can say these are the three major types of iron ore that are available in india right remember the correspondent iron ore and its correspondence the content of iron uh, that is there in that particular iron ore right distribution if we understand about the iron ore so wide said wide widespread presence is there in india iron ore deposits are found in almost every state of india indicating its widespread distribution across the country right so concentration of reserves despite widespread distribution 96% of india's total iron ore reserves they are concentrated in few states those are odisha jharkhand chatisgarh karnataka and goa so so basically these two belts i mean these state uh, 
the second belt we have studied we have studied about it so basically these two karnataka and goa fall in that belt so goa instead of being a small state it produces i mean one of the highest quantities of iron ore in india because these two states they are located in the western ghats part right so there iron is abundantly available so goa instead of being a small state still it produces lot of lot many quantities of iron ore in india other states are odisha jharkhand and chatisgarh they also produce iron ore production centers if you see these five states they also account for approximately 96% of the total production of uh, iron ore also right minor contribute uh, contributors are about 3% of the country's total iron ore production comes from the states like tamil nadu maharashtra and andhra pradesh if you see the major reserves right orissa odisha and jharkhand they collectively possess around 50% of india's reserves of high quality iron high high grade iron ore right principal deposits are located in sindar uh, sindargar so these are the mines where the mines are located mayurbhanj uh, kionjhar these districts are there in odisha and the singbam district of jharkhand so these are the major iron ore mines in these two particular states other important states uh, additional states with the notable iron ore reserves are assam bihar madhya pradesh meghalaya rajasthan and uttar pradesh so these are the other states that have iron ore mines uh, we can say their but their contribution is not that much right so this is about the iron ore next is manganese manganese ore so it is also a vital resource for various uh, industries prominently in iron and steel manufacturing so manganese is also and uh, used in iron and steel industry only right so it finds it lab its applications in dry batteries photography leather and match industries as well right so india manganese ore production holds significant global significance ranking 7th in 7th uh, in the world's production in 2019 so india is ranking 7th in the production of manganese so it is contributing approximately 5.13% to the global output right if we see the distribution the major production areas or states are odisha madhya pradesh maharashtra karnataka andhra pradesh they are the primary regions where uh, which are contributing to the production of manganese in india reserve concentration if you see about 78% of india's manganese ore is concentrated in a belt existing from nagpur and bandara districts of maharashtra to balaghat and chindwara district of madhya pradesh so basically this mineral is existing a belt located between maharashtra and madhya pradesh regions right minor contributors so up to 12 from 12% to 14% some other states are uh, uh, contributing uh, remaining reserves so the remaining reserves 22% of manganese reserves in india are distributed across odisha karnataka gujarat rajasthan goa and andhra pradesh so this is the distribution and the use of manganese ore in the country right so two important metals we have studied in the uh, <coughs> ferrous metallic minerals now we will study about the non ferrous metallic minerals so they constitute the second category of metallic minerals distinguished by their lack of iron content so the major difference between the ferrous and the non ferrous minerals is the absence and the presence of iron or we also call it as ferrous right so the major minerals in this group are gold silver copper tin lead zinc etc right this uh, despite their absence of iron 
these minerals also hold a lot of significance and importance in various aspects in the daily life so by listening to these names you can understand their importance they have also a lot of we can say usefulness in our day to day life right so india faces notable deficiencies in the availability of such minerals as you all know we have to spend a lot of foreign exchange reserves for importing gold so we are a gold loving country people uh, love investing in golds and it has gold has also lot of cultural significance so in the marriages the family members of the girls family members they will give lot of gift a uh, lot of gold as a gift to the we can say bride uh, during uh, during the ma- marriage and the people also love to wear the gold ornaments and also people instead of depositing the money in the banks they love to purchase the gold and keep it as we can say an investment so because of these reasons uh, we are spending a lot of foreign exchange uh, to import the gold so it has become a major problem i mean it is a major problem so india has tried to the government has tried to address this issue through various measures like paper gold and also the gold bond scheme etc and also the monetization of gold etc many initiatives have been taken we can say they are not that successful and we can say they are partially successful partially successful and the gold price of the gold is still skyrocketing so it is increasing uh, day by day a lot right because major reason is we are deficient when we uh, when it comes to the non ferrous metallic minerals right one mineral we will understand here so bauxite so bauxite is it is uh, one of the important non ferrous metallic minerals serves as the primary ore for production of aluminium metal right so india's bauxite resources are substantial ensuring country's self reliance in this crucial resources so aluminium extracted from this bauxite mineral it finds extensive applications in various industries including aerospace so in aeroplanes electrical appliances and household fittings utensils etc so when we compare to uh, iron and steel aluminum is it weighs less when we compare with the iron and steel but it is most du- uh, more durable more durable and we can work easily with aluminum when we compare it to the iron and iron or steel so over iron it has many advantages so because of this industry in specific industries like aerospace etc the aluminum is used in place of iron right additionally bauxite is also used for uh, manufacturing white color cement and certain chemicals resource est- estimation if you see india's bauxite resources of all grades were estimated at uh, approximately we can say 4000 million tons so this estimation was done in 2015 so approximately 4000 million metric tons of alu- bauxite reserves are there in india if you see their distribution it is widely distributed across india major reserves are located in states such as jharkhand maharashtra madhya pradesh chatisgarh gujarat karnataka tamil nadu etc export market india exports bauxite to several countries with italy it is being the leading importer followed by uk germany and japan so basically these countries they uh, import the raw material or raw bauxite and they supply to india the finished aluminum goods finished aluminum goods so this is one area we have to address because we are exporting the raw material and we are importing the finished goods so this issue has to be addressed so instead of that we have to develop the and we have to create the facilities to process and uh, to process the bauxite ore and produce the aluminum that will be more beneficial for the country 
so it is the abundance of strategic resources uh, that reserves of bauxite it contributes significantly to various industries uh, industrial sectors and the global trade relations however if we have our own processing centers that will be more beneficial to the country because it is a crucial industry it has lot of applications when it comes to aerospace and other electronic industries electronic industries right. so this is about uh, <coughs> metallic minerals now we will understand about non metallic minerals so india boasts a wealth of non metallic minerals although only a select few holding significant commercial importance so among the notable non metallic minerals are limestone dolomite mica kyanite sillimanite etc so these are some of the important non metallic minerals so these are diverse industrial purposes uh, they are used in cement manufacturing fertilizer production and electric electrical goods industry is vital right right one of such non metallic mineral is mica it holds a lot of significance in india being the india being the leading producer of this particular uh, mica sheets globally so historically it has been indispensable in the electric and uh, electronic industries although its usage has been uh, somewhat changes in the recent time so basically mica it is being a non metal so it uh, acts as a we can say uh, resistant resistant to electricity or electric we can say electricity flow all right so basically mica will be used majorly it is it was used to be uh, a resistant use it it used to be used as a resistant in the electric industries so basically now at present this particular min uh, mineral has been replaced by some other minerals so its usage is being declined nowadays so one major uh, we can say the equipment that uh, where mica used to be used is iron boxes right so this particular metal now its uh, we can say particular metal has been replaced by some other metal right distribution so the estimation in 2015 was so 635000 tons of uh, mica reserves have been estimated in india distribution so it is widely distributed in india right but workable deposits are primarily found in three states those are andhra pradesh in these three states andhra pradesh is the primary one so it possesses the highest share of mica resources accounting for 40% of the total some other states they are also contributing to the production of mica those are rajasthan odisha maharashtra bihar jharkhand etc right this is about the mica one of the important uh, non we can say non metal right next one is limestone so it finds extensive use across wide range of industries in india so majority major user of this limestone is the cement industry right so as you all know so limestone it is one of the important raw materials in the cement industry so two thirds of the country's total consumption of limestone is dedicated to the cement industry so some other sectors that are using limestone are iron and steel chemical industry sugar industry paper industry etc so in cement industry when we come to cement industry limestone with high silica content it is particularly preferred right resource estimation so if you see according to 2015 estimation india estimated to possess 2,3225 million tons of limestone resources highlighting its abundant availability in the country distribution if you see so the major states include madhya pradesh karnataka chatisgarh andhra pradesh telangana gujarat rajasthan etc additionally some small amount of contributions will also come from Assam, Haryana, Jammu Kashmir, Kerala, Meghalaya, etc.
right so this is about the lime stone right so these are some of the important minerals both uh, metallic and uh, non uh, non metallic minerals they uses and uh, their distribution so basically the distribution and availability you have to focus on right now we will see about the energy resources so the energy resources also very important for a country when it comes to the economy of country right so <clears throat> adequate availability of energy resources it is crucial for driving economic development and enhancing quality of life so as you all know we are lacking sufficient energy resources so we are depend uh, importing the crude oil we can say coal we have we can say abundant quality but uh, when it comes to crude oil we do not have so because of this uh, reason we have to face lot of economic challenges we are importing basically importing crude oil, importing crude oil and also natural gas from west asian countries so these are politically you can say unstable countries so <clears throat> in this way our energy security is a little bit compromised however we are trying to diversify our imports so we are we have started importing the shale gas from usa and also we are focusing on importing natural gas from russia also so we were also heavily dependent on iran so because of the sanctions on iran by the united states of america and uh, european union we have also have to divert our imports to some other country so this is uh, some of the scenarios uh, when it comes to energy picture of india when we discuss the mains we will uh, delve some more detail into these areas so in this topic here in this lecture we will focus on understanding various energy resources right so if we see the classification of energy resources one type of classification is based on longevity of the energy resources so here the energy resources based on longevity they can be uh, divided into renewable and non renewable so new you know very well about these uh, resources these two uh, type of classification renewable and non renewable so renewable resources are so if we keep on using the resources also their quality quantity quantity e do not compromise or do not reduce for example solar energy or for example wind energy so even when we are using those the, that particular resource their quantity is not re being reduced those are those are called as renewable energy resources so whereas if we come to the non renewable resources these particular resources basically they keep on replicating they keep on producing so those are generally called as renewable energy resources so they are inexhaustible in nature so generally the examples are water sun wind tidal energy hot springs etc so whereas when we come to non renewable energy resources their quantity is limited quantity is limited so their uh, as we are using their uh, their them so their quantity is being reduced at one point time they exhaust so major examples are you can see the coal petrol uh, crude oil or petroleum reserves so some other resources other resources are also there like uranium resources etc so they they are limited in availability right this is one type of uh, we can say classification another type of classification is uh, based on the usage so that can be conventional conventional energy resources we are using uh from them we can say uh from some uh, we can say hundreds of years or uh, we can say decades so we are using them traditionally those are conventional energy resources so other ones are other qualification is another type is non conventional non conventional so recently we have started using them so examples are we can say nuclear power and uh, wind energy uh, solar energy 
etc these are non conventional energy resources when we come to conventional energy resources those are coal or thermal energy or we can say uh, crude oil crude oil or petroleum etc these are uh, conventional energy resources right so uh, the examples of conventional sources are coal petroleum natural gas these are conventional sources non conventional include sun wind water etc right so basically we can the the conventional energy sources are majorly the uh, non renewable energy sources non renewable energy sources whereas the non conventional energy sources are renewable energy sources renewable energy resources so try to remember this qualification uh, sorry uh, we can say classification of energy resources first we will see some conventional energy sources or conventional sources of energy in that coal occupies a primary uh, place so coal stands as the primary source of commercial energy in india right serving various sectors including industries thermal power stations and domestic use in certain regions additionally it also serves as a raw material raw material in chemical and fertilizer industries as well as in the production of numerous daily items resource estimation so gsi the geological survey of india estimated that india has 326000 billion tons of coal reserves in india right so uh, we can say it is one of the major reserve holders india is one of the major reserve holders in the world when it comes to coal reserves however the problem is a significant portion of these coal reserves are relatively of poor quality necessity uh, necessitating the import import of cooking coal uh, to fulfill the requirements so some uh, industries require high quality of coal is uh, we can say coal mineral however we do not have sufficient uh, amount of uh, that superior quality coal resource so because of that reason we have to import that coal from other countries production if you see so in 2019 20 the pro- total production of india reached uh, 729 million tons annually All right so try to remember these facts also total results are 326000 billion tons so annual production if we see we have reached 729 million tons uh, annually in 2019 right utilization and distribution if we see so this emphasizes india is placed on uh, placed on establishing thermal and super thermal power stations near uh, coal fields with electricity generated being transmitted to distant areas via transmission lines so we have focused on establishing the thermal power stations where the coal reserves are located and uh, we have focused on transmitting the whatever the electricity electricity produced there to distant regions so still the thermal energy that is being produced through coal it still holds the majority portion in the country so previously indian railways were the largest consumer of coal however the transition to diesel and electricity has been shifted this dynamic so major, majorly now we are producing electricity in the coal uh, sorry thermal power stations and we are using that electricity to run the trains earlier the engines were directly running uh, were running on the coal right so right in india when we see coal in india is found in two main types of coal fields uh, the co- goldwana coal fields and the tertiary coal fields so goldwana coal coal fields if you see they contribute 98% of the total coal reserves and the production in india they are primarily located in the river valleys of damodar son mahanadi godavari and varda right next one is tertiary coal fields they contribute the remaining 2% of the coal production and uh, they are located in extra peninsular areas such as assam meghalaya nagaland arunachal pradesh 
जम्मू एंड कश्मीर एक्सेट्रा राइट लिग्नाइट और ब्राउन कोल डिपॉजिट आर फाउंड इन कोस्टल एरिया ऑफ तमिलनाडु गुजरात एंड लैंड बेसिस ऑफ एंड इन लैंड बेसिस ऑफ राजस्थान सो लिग्नाइट कॉर्पोरेशन यू मैट बी नोइंग सो दैट विल बी दैट कॉर्पोरेशन विल बी यूजिंग द लिग्नाइट एंड प्रोड्यूसिंग इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इन तमिलनाडु राइट सेकेंड मेजर वी कैन से एनर्जी रिसोर्स वेन वी सी द कन्वेंशनल सोर्स ऑफ एनर्जी दैट इज नैचुरल गैस सो इट इज नैचुरल गैस इज इंक्रीजिंगली रिकग्नाइज एज अ सिग्निफिकेंट सोर्स फॉर कमर्शियल एनर्जी विथ इट्स इंपॉर्टेंस ऑन ऑन दि राइज इन इंडिया एनर्जी लैंडस्केप सो नैचुरल गैस इज नाउ बींग पॉप्युलराइज ओवर कोल बिकॉज फर्स्ट मेजर इंपॉर्टेंस इट इज क्लीनर दैन कोल क्लीनर दैन कोल सेकेंड वन इज uh the previously we do not have the technology to harvest natural gas so it is found along with the we can say coal reserves or petroleum reserves however due to the lack of technology we were just burning this natural gas and we were extracting extracting the uh crude oil or the coal reserves however with the improving technology the production of our we can say the capture of natural gas has also been made possible especially the uh, natural gas in the shale <coughs> shale rocks uh the natural gas that is present in the shale rocks ha- we uh, we have developed the technology to capture this natural gas so the natural gas that is present in the shale rock it is called as the shale gas shale gas right so earlier the uh, technology was costlier and uh, the production the pro- natural gas production that was uh, included we can say uh, shale rock so it was costlier now because of the improvement in technology the usa is producing this shale gas at reasonable prices reasonable prices so it has become production has become economical so because of that reason also we are importing shale gas uh, from usa right so if you see the association its association with the petroleum so natural gas it is often found in association with petroleum reserves contributing to its availability so continued exploration of efforts have led to the discovery of more natural gas reserves expanding its potential contribution to energy mix production if you see In 2020-21, India produced 23,000 billion metric uh, mmS CMT, million metric standard cubic meters per day uh, of natural gas. So, uh, day by day, due to the improving, we can say scouting for the resources, due to improving exploration and also advance advancement in technology. the uh, mix i mean the composition of natural gas in the energy mixer it is increasing day by day right this is about the natural gas right next category is conventional uh, energy sources some uh, we can say experts they ila- they will also keep these minerals i talk minerals in non conventional because they are uh, less polluting when we compare to the coal and natural gas they are less pollutive so some experts will also put them under natural uh, non conventional energy resources however no problem uh, so in the earlier classes when uh, in the science and technology subject we have discussed a nuclear energy thoroughly so we have understood the three stage nuclear program of india and also the importance of we have understood uh, the importance of thorium based we can say nuclear power production because we have abundant resources of thorium in india so all these things we have understood however here we will once again try to uh, remind ourselves about the these two particular energy resources so atomic minerals the two major minerals in atomic minerals are uranium and thorium so if we see the uranium occurrence in india they are found in igneous and metamorphic rocks in the regions like jharkhand rajasthan andhra pradesh and the parts of himalayas right 
the mineral that is uh, where uranium is found is monazite sands along the kerala coast they also contains the substantial uranium deposit so if you see the production so presently uranium production is uh, concentrated in the mines of mines at jadi jaduguda in singbham district of jharkhand however in andhra pradesh in the rail sima region we can say one of the largest uranium reserves have been found at tumalapalli so here one of the largest uranium deposits have been found not only in india but also in the world right so if we see the reserves india possesses significant uranium reserves sufficient to support electricity generating capacity of more than 5 to 10000 megawatts per year right so th- thorium if you understand source thorium is primarily obtained from monazite a mineral found in beach sands the deposits if you see the beach sands of kerala in palakkad and quillon districts they harbor the world's richest monazite deposits apart from that additionally thorium also occurs in the sands of visakhapatnam in andhra pradesh right so this is about the atomic minerals now we will see some of the non conventional energy sources right right first one is the hydroelectric power uh, hydroelectric power in uh, power so earlier it used to be considered under the conventional energy source only conventional energy source only however recently the government of india reclassified it as the non conventional energy non conventional energy or renewable energy right so there are some concerns associated with this one because the water is also relatively highly exploited for the production of electricity we can say and also because of the changes in the rainfall pattern of india many of the reserves are uh, we can say uh, reservoirs that are sub, uh, supposed to hold water their capacity actual capacity is lying vacant because of non availability of sufficient uh, uh, amount of water so the hyd- hydroelectric electric power plants also they are unable to generate up to their uh, capacity because of non availability of uh, water and also the experts ecological exper- experts they are uh, highly against the we can say the uh, uh, construction of barrages and the dams which hold water and use uh, that water being used for the production of hydroelectric power however they are advocating run of the river run of the river hydro electric power so this is more ecologically more uh, suitable here the large scale dams will not be built to reserve the water so the flow of the water it itself will be used for the production of electricity in this way the we can avoid the large scale uh, construction of dams big big dams and also we can maintain ecological flow ecological flow in the rivers so because of the absence of sufficient uh, amount of water flow in the rivers the rivers are also depleting so they have facing lot of uh, consequences so the wildlife that is there in the river waters dependent on the river waters so it, they are also facing uh, facing lot of challenges so because of all these reasons uh, the run of the river projects have been advocated by the ecological uh, ecologists and uh, the major dams big big dams they have been opposed by these experts so earlier this uh, hydroelectric power it used to be considered as a renew- uh, non renewable energy source however the government has classified reclassified it as uh, non renewable uh, sorry renewable uh, energy source and non conventional energy source so it is better if we are considering the small small and medium hydro electric power plants or we can say small hydro small hydro electric power plants that can be considered they can be considered as a renewable source of energy because they do not cause that much 
psychological harm right however the government has started considering all the uh, hydroelectric power plants as non conventional energy resources uh, so we have to follow that categorization so here some historical development of the hydroelectric uh, power has been given uh, please go through that development current status if we see india boasts an impressive share of hydroelectricity generation capacity uh, in the total installed capacity so as of 2022 the total installed capacity of hydro power is 46850 megawatt or approximately we can say 47 gigawatt of capacity uh, installed capacity we have when it comes to the hydroelectricity power so it is 11.4% of the total installed capacity of india right so decline in significance so despite being cheaper pollution free and renewable in nature so the significance of hydroelectricity has been declined over the past uh, past uh, post independence period so the its share in total power generation decreased from 49% in 1950 51 to only 11.4% in 22 23 so however still it plays a, it uh, hydroelectricity continues to play a significant role in the northern western and the southern grids of india contributing to regional energy security and stability right this is about the hydroelectricity next we will see another conventional energy source so it has the solar energy it has the bright future we can say bright future so uh, description solar energy harnesses the abundant sunlight to generate electricity through solar photovoltaic cells so it is used utilized for various applications such as water heating solar cooking etc potential india is being the tro- uh, india is in the tropical zone so it receives ample sunshine especially in hot dry and cloud free areas making it suitable for sona solar energy development right so current status if we see with the installed capacity of 63000 uh 894 megawatt or approximately 64 gigawatt 64 gigawatt the solar energy contributes to 50 15% approximately percent of the total installed capacity of india so till uh, now at presently karnataka leads the installed capacity followed by rajasthan madhya pradesh telangana and andhra pradesh so i mean try to know about the all the other aspects that are associated with the solar energy so isa international solar alliance and also the so know about the isa international solar alliance and also about the national national solar mission and the targets uh, for the solar mission Uh, both the <coughs> we can say solar power plants and also solar rooftop solar rooftop and also solar uh, we can say power plants so the targets and also the achieving i mean the uh, whether we are able to achieve the targets or not, not especially when we come to the rooftop category and a specific scheme has been started recently uh, to encourage or promote the rooftop solar rooftop uh, energy production so try to cover all these aspects in the current affairs part of the uh, solar energy right so solar energy is very very important from the point of view of examination so in the current affairs part try to cover all these aspects also right this is about the solar energy next is the wind energy so wind energy it utilizes strong and consistent winds to generate electricity primarily for pumping water and power generation potential so regions with uh, continuous winds throughout the year they are ideal for wind energy development current status if we see india has the installed generation capacity of approximately uh, 42000 megawatt or 42 gigawatt we can say 
so in 2022 23 so tamil nadu is leading the uh, leading in the installed capacity followed by gujarat maharashtra karnataka and andhra pradesh right so this is about wind energy next another important uh, renewable energy resource or non conventional energy resource biomass so biomass is uh, derived from various organic sources such as biogas agricultural resi- residue waste materials they serve as important renewable energy stores potential so it is widely available and carbon neutral offering potential for employment generation in rural areas also uh, right so earlier you have aware of the success uh, successful uh, we can say uh, employment in the execution of biogas plants in the hinterlands in the rural hinterlands especially in punjab so on that lines we can also focus on develop, uh, developing the bio energy on a large scale current status if you see india's total installed capacity biomass energy was uh, uh, 10000 megawatt or 10 gigawatt in 2022 23 next is tidal energy so it is one of the important non conventional energy resources so tidal energy harnesses the energy from the high tidal waves primarily along the coastal areas so the potential sites for tidal energy generation are gulf of kutch kambe in gujarat and the coasts of kerala so these areas are more suitable for generating the tidal energy next is geothermal energy so geothermal thermal energy utilizes heat from the from the earth's crust to power generation through its potential though its potential in india is limited so limited potential sites are identified in uh, himachal pradesh uh, the in marikaran the geothermal uh, uh, energy we can find it the we can say the gas or water emerges from the underground so it has substantially high temperature so that high temperature can be harnessed and the power can be produced from the that source and the second uh, location is puga puga valley in ladakh so these are the two major sources in india current status if you see assessment of geothermal energy potential is going in selected sites in himachal pradesh jammu kashmir uttarakhand jharkhand and chatisgarh right so this is about geothermal energy right so this is some information about the mineral resources and as well as the energy resources right so now we will see some of the questions previously that are asked previously from this topic the question first question it is asked in 2020 question is consider the following minerals so minerals are bentonite chromite kyanite sillimanite so question is in uh, india which of the above is or are officially designated as the major minerals so apart from uh, bentonite these other three minerals they are classified as the major minerals in india so try to go through the classification based on the major mineral and minor mineral also in india right so basically the affairs relating to all the major minerals the central government look after central government and when it comes to the minor minor minerals the states the respective states have the say so they can frame the rules they can uh, i can say give licenses for extracting the minerals etc so when come when it comes to the major minerals the central government will look after when it comes to the minor minerals the state government will uh, look after so because of that reason the classification of minerals becomes important next question is uh, it is asked in 2019 question is with reference to the management of minor minerals in india consider the following statements first statement sand is a minor mineral according to the prevailing law in the country yes it's, uh, this is a correct statement so to answer this question you should have the awareness about mmdr act mmdr act 
so mines and mineral development and regulation act so there is an amendment in 2013 also for this particular act so try to be aware of this act so this statement is correct according to the act sand is classified as a minor mineral next statement state governments have the power to grant mining leases for minor minerals uh, but the power regarding the formulation of rules related to the grant of minor minerals lie with the central government no this statement is incorrect this power also framing the rules also the states have the stay here so all the aspects when it comes to the minor minerals the state governments have the power in with respect to the major minerals the central government frames the rules third statement uh, uh, state uh, state governments they have the power to frame the rules to prevent illegal mining of minor minerals yes this statement is correct so the correct option is option a statement 1 and 3 are correct third question uh, it is asked in 2016 the question is in which of the following regions of india shale gas resources are found so the options are kambe basin kaveri basin krishna godavari basin uh, select the correct answer using the code given so basically in all the three regions the shale gas resources are found Kam- kambe basin kaveri basin and the krishna godavari basin right so apart from these questions there is a i mean there is a chance of you are you can get a question on the non conventional energy resources because their role is becoming more and more important especially the power sources like wind energy solar energy biomass energy and for that matter the small or minor energy resources like tidal energy and geothermal energy so try to be aware of all these things including the especially the energy mix energy mix i mean which source is contributing how much so you have to be aware of all these aspects right so this is all for today thank you thank you for joining the class uh, see you next time until then have a good day see you next time.